Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. This is Books with the Fucada where we talk about books and food every now and then. Today, yes, <coughs> my voice still sounds like music to your ears. I'm still a bit sick, but it's my last day of sickness. Oh my god, please, please praise the Lord. And I wanted to talk to you about something today. And that little something is horror audiobooks because it's the month of October we all love to listen to things I mean you're watching me but most of like a lot of time I listen to YouTube videos and I'm just like doing things around the house and audiobooks are a great way to read books be spooked because the ones that I'm gonna tell you are gonna spook you and just have a great time while you do other things. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time because I love audiobooks. I really like I've really got into audiobooks last year and and no, two years ago because I started puzzling a lot and while puzzling I love listening to audiobooks. It's a great way to like read books while I do another thing that I love. And during this time, like you know, during these years, I've curated a list of 10 horror audiobooks that to me are like masterpieces and you know it took me a lot of time because I wanted to reach the magic number 10 but I finally did it I reached 10 horror audiobooks that are just like chef's kiss and today we're gonna talk about those before I, li I list you the books there's two reasons why these books made it to my you know, creme de la creme horror audiobooks. The first one being the atmosphere. If the horror audiobook made me scared, if I was like tense while listening to it, if the creepy atmosphere was there, if really I was so hooked into it that I was like looking behind me because I really thought these things were happening and like, you know, I was really like in a super great, horror atmosphere it made it to the list no matter what the rating ended up being the second thing is that the story was so great and so well told and narrated that i kept like i kept looking forward to it so i purposely made other activities instead of reading like physical books to just listen to the audiobook for instance I would go to work walking <laughs> instead of going by subway because it's longer just to listen to the audiobook or whenever I would go for a run. It's very rare that I listen to audiobooks when I'm on a run because usually my brain just wanders off and whatever. But some of these books I was so hooked that I was like, I'm just gonna go for a run, 10k, whatever. I'm just gonna put it, it's gonna be easy run, but at least I'll put it another hour in this audiobook because I'm so into it. So basically, that's the reasoning. The ranking begins with Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesari, narrated by Jesse Bilinski. This is a story of a daughter and a father. They move to a new town, uh, they want a new fresh start, and they move into this town, and the town, I mean, the town is weird. The town has weird vibes. I'm just gonna say, they could have googled this, they could have checked a bit before, do some research, like you're moving into a new town and you don't check if the town is weird before you move in, but whatever, whatever. They move in and basically the adults, they're like trying to revive the city, like the town and make it great again and whatnot, and the teenagers, they're like, they're like doing pranks, not going to school, they're like buddy buddy teenagers. And basically, <laughs> one day, <laughs> The teenagers, they start to die because there's a killer clown out there. And that's it. I'm not going to say more. Like, the story is just your average fun horror blockbuster. It's funny. It's a no-brainer book. It's a YA horror, so it's very, like, fast-paced. And the audiobook is literally a Netflix horror movie in an audiobook. Like, the narration, I was, like, hooked. So hooked. I was, like... I wanted to read this, like, I literally went for two 12k runs to finish this book because I was like, I need to finish it. Like, it really, really, truly felt like a horror movie that was just, like, told to me. It was fast-paced, the characters, I was, like, hooked, the narration was so intense, I was like, oh, 
I think if I had read this book physical copy, I would not have enjoyed it as much as I did. It's a four star book for me, it's not a five star book, uh, because it's still very like, it's an easy story, it's not, you know, uh, but it's so enjoyable and honestly, if you want an easy audio, like an easy horror audiobook, read Clown in the Cornfield, it's so funny, so horror, I love it, like it was such a great experience. The next one is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, uh, narrated by Mar Marin Island, Ireland. And the story is very basic. It's a family, they have booked this house up uh, outside of New York uh, and for the weekend and they go, they put themselves in, they're like, great, the house is great, it's clean, you know, perfect. And suddenly a storm breaks out and they're like, oh, well, at least we're in the house, like we're safe here. And then in the middle of the night, <laughs> a couple rings at the door and they go check and they go the couple that you know is there they go like oh we're the owners of the house and because there's a storm we found ourselves stranded and so can we stay here for the night until the storm is over and the family is like how do we know you're telling the truth and like at this point in the story which happens very early on there's this paranoia that sets in and like you don't believe the family that's staying in you don't believe the couple that appeared in the middle of the night you mistrust every single character in this book you mistrust everything that's being told in this book like at some point there's like the internet goes down and all of this and like it's just a massive paranoia of a book the narration is not exquisitely like so good because you know like the story was advancing and I was like, oh, should I believe the family? Should I believe the couple? Should I believe the kids? Who should I believe? Should, I, should we believe the news? Should we believe... I don't know, what's happening? And like, the narrator really does a great work, like, job at telling you the story, but in a way that you're like, huh, it, are you, like, are you telling the truth? Like, what's going on? And he does this throughout the entirety of the book and at the end, I was like, wow, mind blown. Like, I absolutely adore this book. This is a five out of five, five out of five for me. Like, it was one great discovery of last year and the audiobook just made the experience much, much better. Um, it's a perfect example of a no plot-ish, there's still a plot, but like, it's very light plot, an all vibes type of book, but it's an excellent execution and I recommend it to you. The next one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Uh, it's a story about narrated by Frankie Corzo. It's a story about a woman. She receives a letter by uh, from her newly wed cousin, and the letter is a bit weird. And she's like asking for help, and so she's like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna check it out." So she goes to where the cousin lives, the new house of the new family where like she married to, like you know the guy she married. And so she goes, and as she moves into the house, like weird things start to happen. The cousin is suddenly well, and she's no longer needed there. The family from the husband's, uh, you know, side is so weird, like, so, 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 so weird. And I, this is a prime example of, if I had read this book, I would not have given it such a high rating. It's not a five-star read for me, it's a four-star read for me, but honestly, I was so hooked. The narrator really makes you feel the struggle of the main character, really makes you scared of like everything the family is doing, all of the shenanigans they're doing. And like the descriptions are really like, you really, like I was listening to it and I was like visualizing everything that the narrator was telling me. And I was like, geez, that, that's scary, like so creepy. And, like it's a bit of a slow paced ish type of book, but like you don't see time pass by and you're like, oh my God, and what is happening and what is happening? And I specifically remember when I was reading this book and I would just go to work on foot to have like one hour more to like listen to this book because it was so freaking enjoyable. And yeah, like it's an excellent gothic story and the narration is so well done. If you're looking for something that's like kind of like haunted house and family, like haunted house, haunted family, like family with secret histories and like really intense vibe books, this is it for you. And please listen to the audiobook. Do not read the book. I think the audiobook makes like makes the book much, much better. So it's out there. 
third book recommendation and now let's go to the fourth. All right, the next one is A House with Good Bones uh, by T. Kingfisher, narrated by Mary Robinette Kowal. And oh my God, this, I know a lot, of, a lot of you haven't loved this book. I know the reactions have been mixed, but this book, the plot is so basic. It's literally a woman. She needs a place to stay for a couple of months because she no longer has a job. So she moves in with her mom. And when she arrives at the house, the house is super weird. The mom is acting weird. There's like vultures like going on top of the house. And she's like, since when have we had vultures? Like what is happening? Or crows? I don't remember the word, but whatever. She's like, this is very weird. And she starts investigating. And the more she investigates, the creepier it gets. And then you realize what's happening. And there's some sort of romance. And like, it's just very like, you know, great. And the narrator of this book, of this, is just, wow she does an excellent job because I, the story is is low stakes like it's very average nothing out of the ordinary it's not a mind-blowing plot but this i don't know why the narrator really made me feel the i was so scared for like with everything that was going on in this book i was like oh my god woman stop going to these places alone call the neighbor call someone do something but not alone and like you would really feel it and you would like really feel like you're going with this character and you're like oh my god we're gonna die we're gonna die we're gonna die and the last chapter ish i think it's to the last two three chapters are just cathartic like it's so intense what happens and the audiobook is like Ugh. i was like i had to pause go rent to my boyfriend and be like I cannot believe this is happening in the audiobook and then come back to the living room and finish it just like I was like this in the couch like what is happening and like it's just insane I loved it it's so great I really hope this gets nominated for best horror of the year I don't think it's gonna win depending on the other nominees but like it's a very good contender and super enjoyable the audiobook is like amazing all right the fifth book in my list is a spanish book so i'm sorry to all of you that do not know how to speak spanish because you're missing out on a lot with this audiobook and it's called el morador uh, by daria pietrak uh, narrated by miguel col miguel coy sorry um the host um translated in english and it's a story about a girl whose grandma dies and she has to go back to the house of the grandma <coughs> oh my god I'm, to the house of the grandma and you know deal with the house like you know putting things out like seeing if they're gonna sell it or whatnot and you know and when she gets there she's like i have so many happy memories of this place and i don't know why we stopped coming here with my parents and she starts investigating and she starts checking with the neighbors and asking around in town and you know checking the house and the more she investigates the creepier the story gets and the more complicated and convoluted and so it felt like a Netflix TV show, like Haunting of Hill House style. And like every chapter was more and more intense and the flashback chapters were just absolutely off the charts. I never, never listen to an audiobook while doing interval workouts because I need my maximum concentration. I'm dying half of the time while doing them. So I, I cannot listen to anything besides music because my brain is just mush. I literally went and did multiple interval sessions listening to this audiobook because it's so freaking intense that my brain managed to concentrate more on the audiobook than the suffering that I was having while doing my interval workouts. I want more audiobooks like this. <laughs> I was like so scared. I was running and I kept looking behind me even though it was like 11 a.m. on a Sunday and everyone was running and families were around me with kids and whatnot. Oh my God. That scared me. And this audiobook, the narrator does an excellent job and I was scared shitless half of the time. And the ending, I was a bit disappointed about one specific thing in the book, even though I knew it was coming. So, you know, I was a bit less disappointed when it came. Uh, but that's a specific topic that I'm just overall annoyed in horror books. But, you know, I'm not going to go in it like on it on this specific thing now because it's not the point of the video. But I gave this a f 5 out of 5 in the end because, you know, it's just <laughs> excellent. If you know how to read Spanish, please <laughs> listen to this audiobook. It's on script. It's great. Really, go ahead. Do it. Do it. <laughs> the next one, it's Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, 
narrated by Michael C. Hall and I know, I know, like Pet Cemetery is a very well-known book. I have read it, I have listened it, I have listened to it, sorry. And it's a, an excellent story. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Like, it's pff, amazing. I listened to the audiobook a long time ago, so maybe I will, li like, a long time ago, before I even started making the list. Like, this is pre, I'd say, like, pre-Goodreads. Like, maybe not pre-Goodreads. I read it, like, I listened to it in 2015 or something like this. But, like, it just, oh, so good. And it's narrated by Michael C. Hall, which is the guy from Dexter. And I guess it's because I, I watched Dexter and maybe because I was picturing Dexter telling me this story that made this story even creepier, but it was just so good. What is Pet Cemetery about, in case you don't know? It's a story about your average American-looking family. They have a house, they have a car, they have kids, they have cats, they have whatnot, but they live next to... Uh, an area, a creepy area, some wood, some cemetery, and whatever goes to that area as a dead thing comes back as a not so dead thing. And yeah, I'm not gonna say more. Honestly, if you have never read Pet Cemetery, do yourself a favor and read it or watch the movie, they're also great. But it's horrifying, the story is so like, you need to be really. Like, Stephen King has a messed up head to write this thing, but like, I don't know, it was just... The book, the audiobook, it's great. The audiobook, to me, maybe in popular opinion, is better than the book. I don't even own a copy of Pet Cemetery. maybe I do somewhere, I don't know. Either way, yeah, listen to this, it's great, it's great. The ambience, the creepiness, the ending! Oh, great. Great, love it. Uh, the last four, the top four. I really hesitated with this top four, but it is up there and it's happening. Number four, we have We Spread uh, by Ian Reid, narrated by Robin Miles. And this is a story about a woman who's in a home, like for old people, and she thinks they're doing something to her. That's it. I'm not gonna say more because it's a relatively short audiobook and book. And if I say more, you're gonna get spoiled. Uh, it's narrated by the grandma, like the grandma, the, the old lady, and like, it is heartbreakingly horrifying and just like, chills. Like, I listened to it while running because it really felt like I was reading the journal of this lady and that I was reading the story of this lady. And I remember when I reached the ending of the book, I was still running, like, I was on my last uh, kilometer of my run and like, I had to, you know, like stop, take a break, look around me, just breathe in. And then I had to, like, I continued, but I was like, wow, this was a tough book. I might have shed some tears while running and listening to this book. It's a horror book because of the topic that it covers, but it's told in such a way that, like, you're anxious about the story, you're scared for the lady, you're scared for yourself, for your future, you're just like in an overall state of mind that like is not peace and the audiobook is so well done that like I, I just still think about it to this day like every time I see We Spread I think about what I felt while listening to this book, how I felt while listening to this book and how I still feel today about this book like it I need to buy myself a copy of this book and properly sit down with it but like it's just incredible and to me it is the best Ian Reid book but uh yeah it's uh, oh, it's so great please do yourself a favor with this book and go listen to it I it, it touches on some topics that are maybe a bit trigger like triggering for you guys so please check I mean what I just said could be applied for literally every book in this like top 10 but still like just you know, you know, we reach the top three and I just realized that there's two books by the same author. So, you know, uh, number three is The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay, narrated by three people, Graham Halstead, Xie Zenz and Elizabeth Wiley. I listened to this while I had COVID last year. Did I have COVID last? Anyway, while I was sick with that shit last year, and I listened to this because at some point, basically, I was sick, but I was not super sick, so I could still do things. 
but when I had a bit of fever I was like just like this in my in my bedroom and I would listen to the Paul Rares Club and oh my god this book got me through so many hours alone in my room that I was like very happy and the book I know a lot of people didn't like this book but it is very good it's a story about a kid who forms a pole bearers club in his high school and he meets this girl in the club that decides to join the club and he's obsessed with her and he thinks she's some weird thing she thinks he thinks she's something i'm not gonna say what because it kind of holds a bit of the mystery of the book but like the entirety of the book is this guy's memoirs and a book that he wrote about his life his experiences with his like this girl and whatnot but it's the girl that has the manuscript and she's reacting to everything that he's saying in his book and she's like this did not happen like it did like, why are you lying to this like i'd never said that you never said that this never happened why do you think this happened and like you never since you have two narrators you don't know should you believe the kid well the boy should you believe the girl is she what he really thinks she is because she keeps she never said she is but she never denied it either and you have these two voices and you're just like, oh my god. So yeah, Paul, Paul Bear's Club, amazing experience. The audiobook is just an amazing cinematogra cinematographic experience. The second book, I hesitated a lot between second and first place, but the second place goes to Fantastic Land by Mike Bokoven, narrated by Angela Daw and Luke Daniels. And this is a story about a natural disaster that happens in an amusement park and people get trapped in that amusement park and they cannot leave and it's mostly teenagers and very young people and at some point during this isolation natural disaster thing they start turning on each other and they start becoming violent with each other so that's the story however the book is told in the format of interviews and each chapter is an interview of another like a different person and like the audiobook is just perfection because it's literally interviews so you have the journalist interviewing them one voice and then you have another voice of the person that's getting interviewed and it feels like a tv show it feels like a documentary and it's amazing the experience reading this book was just out of the ordinary my only critique with it is that i may me maybe would have liked more chapters from the journalist perspective to get more of a linear input of what happened in the park because we only have the you know the the testimonies of people and like the interviews of people and what happened and so you form the story yourself in your head and you get a good idea of what happened but maybe like you know some sort of like traditional shaped chapters with this you know traditional format and whatnot would have been great but like great it has descriptions of very gory things sometimes so maybe dread carefully as well with this one but again, as I said, it's horror books. You're gonna find a lot of things in these books. So, you know, check them before reading them. The last one, the one that takes the crown, the one that wins them all is, it's raining. ASMR for you guys. A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This was amazing. I was as scared as watching some horror movies while listening to this i at some point i listened to this while i was at home alone and i had to stop because i was like uh-uh nope <laughs> nope 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 there's a head full of ghosts about it's a story about a family two kids two girls one of them may or may not have mental health issues but the parents believe that she's possessed or not they don't know but they invite a tv crew at in their home to like film what's going on kind of like a reality tv show and they film the exorcism of this kid and so we get the story told uh from the documentary type of storyline but we also get like blog entries and we also get the perspective of the sister at some point so it's a very complex book about the storyline of the family and the kids and the one that's seemingly possessed and it just a masterpiece honestly it is the best Paul Tremblay book I'm very sad that I don't own a copy of this book nor 
the Paul Bowyer's Club. But I'm definitely gonna buy these two books. They're just amazing. And honestly, both audiobooks are a masterpiece. But A Head Full of Ghosts really takes the crown when it comes to making you feel scared, making you really feel that creepy atmosphere and that paranoia of like, is this kid possessed? The stories that the kid tells are just like insane. Everything is told in a great way and it's just so spooky. Like, it is to me, and the reason why I put it in the first place is that it's at the same time extremely creepy and the atmosphere is great and it really just elevates the story to another level. Like, it's just amazing. Amazing, a masterpiece, really like, so good, so freaking good. Not only the book is great, but the other book is just like, whoo! Oh. So, those are my 10 books. I'm very happy with them. I'm very happy I finalized the list. Uh, that's it for today. Let me know if you have any other horror audiobooks that you would like to add to my top 10. Maybe next time I'll do a top 20. But I'm always open to horror audiobook recommendations. So, let me know in the comments. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you did like, if you like this video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell button, don't forget to comment, spread the tofu kind of love, and I'll see you guys next time for more content. Bye!